Hello and welcome to the Curly Bookworm. My name is Shabani and I am an artist and art entrepreneur and I also love reading books and that's what this channel is about. So listen, I screwed up. <laughs> I screwed up on this one painting that I've been working on for months and I found myself thinking what are the different things that I do to fix it. And so here I am telling you five different ways I approach fixing a painting. So I want to tell you how I reframe the whole situation when I've made a mistake in my paintings. Let's go. So if you follow me on Instagram, you know which painting I'm talking about. I kind of made my launch video with this so you know which painting I'm talking about. I'm going to put it here in case it's not already there. And um, it's an interesting one that I want to talk about because it started off really, really well. Like I loved where it was going. I worked on it many times, not just once. Um, I just kept going back and that's kind of part of my creative process and my creative practice. So the genesis of this painting came from this sketch. I'll put this up here. And then that sketch became this, which is a postcard that I made digitally. Um, like I basically took the painting from my sketchbook and I put it on um, Procreate and did stuff with it and created it digitally and, and eventually ended up sending this to people all over the world for like New Year's cards, this and some other ones but this one as well. So that's sort of the history behind it and what I'm working on now is the final painting and um, I screwed up. <laughs> I screwed up the painting and I don't know how but like it happens often to me that when I'm in the 80th percentile of finishing my painting I very often end up screwing up uh, maybe because I'm nervous maybe because that's the trickiest part. I feel like you know 50-60% of the beginning of a painting is literally just play and then you get towards the end and you're more solving than playing your sort of um uh, you know finding the balance in what you're doing and very often i make mistakes there and there's like a whole process that i have come up with over many years that has helped me deal with making mistakes it never used to be easy initially but it is now um well as easy as it can be i want to share that with you today so i'm going to actually show you some of the stuff that i did while i was fixing this painting this is the state that the painting was in i did not like it and um, I'm gonna start fixing it in the video that you'll see now um, and I'll talk you through the five ways in which I fix mistakes and so let's start with tip number one My first tip, something that I do very often, is walk away from the painting. Let me tell you, my first reaction when I finished that part of the painting was absolute frustration. I hated it. Now you may not hate it, some of you may even think it's just fine as it is, but art is always subjective and I was not happy with this. I can't tell you what felt off, but something felt off balance. I showed it to my sister who's always the first person I show, she's like somebody I consult with these things and she didn't dislike it. But I was like mad at it, <laughs> for like 5 minutes I was stomping mad and frustrated and this isn't new for me, I figured out that it's kind of part of the process now. Frustration and feeling like your work isn't going where you want it to go is part of the process. In fact, I would say earlier in when I first started painting, the frustration lasted a few days, so much longer essentially. But now it's beautifully capped at like five minutes, uh, after which I immediately tell myself, okay, you've messed it up now, but you know how to figure it out. You just don't know how to figure it out now. And you need time away from it because the solution will eventually surface. And so, <laughs> at this point, I just ghost the painting, I leave it be, and sometimes it's for days, and sometimes it's for weeks, and with some very rare cases, I put it out of my mind for months. At this point, you're seeing me painting now, it has been, I feel like, at least three or four weeks. 
and I've come back to it. And I've noticed that this is actually the best solution, especially for my bigger pieces of work um, on canvas. It's a strange thing I find when you're a creative person. You are in charge and in, sometimes at the same time you're not in charge. Your subconscious is. And so part of the process is trusting the process. Trusting your subconscious artist, knowing that they've got your back. So. Every time I come back to Canvas, I have found that I know exactly how to go from here. It's not like I've actively tried to find a solution in the meanwhile while I've taken that pause. I mean, initially, right after I've paused, I spend hours thinking about how it could be solved. But eventually, I kind of let it drop out of my mind. And still, when I go back to it, like now, after some time has passed, my subconscious mind has worked it all out. I get into it almost instinctively and immediately and I just know where to take it. But like I said, the most important thing of walking away is having the trust that when you come back, you'll know exactly where to take it. I think in general, that's kind of a great tip for life too, to be honest. So anyway, that's tip number one on how I work through my mistakes. I also want to say here that this only kind of happens with my big work, with my smaller work, like sketchbook work, I tend to fix it immediately. Which brings me to my second tip, which is to work with your mistakes. Okay, so my father, who was an artist, always said there's no such thing as a mistake. You can always turn your mistake into an opportunity. He said make the mistake, it's fine, and then just work with it. Don't use an eraser if you can help it. Now I know you think that's easy to say if you're in the business of like doing loose paintings or abstract work. But then again, I think back to my father's work. He worked with a lot of different styles, including abstract work, but he painted very detailed, gorgeous landscapes that required absolute precision. And even then, he kind of stuck to the belief that mistakes can actually move the needle a lot more and take the painting to the next level. And so um, a lot of what I do with my work for the last few years is I very, very rarely erase. And if I make a mistake, whether it's a wonky line or I put on the wrong shade or the color of paint, I just learn to work with it. For example, some marks that I make sometimes make a beautiful underpainting. Even on this painting, there are a few parts that actually do have um, an underpainting because of some previous mistakes <laughs> that I've made. Or I, maybe I drew a wonky line. Um, I feel like wonky lines add character if you know how to work with it and you only know how to work with it if you keep doing it, if you have tried it before and not try to erase it. Anyway, the trick is to keep moving around said mistake and working with it rather than being fixated to some previous version of what you had in mind. On to tip number three, pause and look at it differently. Many times when I'm in the middle of painting something, I'll realize I've made a mistake or I don't like where it's going. It also feels like there's no way to work with it. And the thing is, I'm in the flow and I don't want to walk away from it either. What I sometimes do at this stage is I take a photo of the painting, then I sit down with a cup of tea or whatever, and then I just chill. I look at it from different angles. I look at different crops of it on my phone. I zoom in, I zoom out, I zoom in in a particular section, and then I zoom in some more. Um, and then I kind of flip it around. I look at very, very detailed parts of certain sections and then again I zoom out and somehow in doing this exercise I try to figure out what feels off balance and where the solution may lie. And this is particularly true by the way for my abstract paintings, like for abstract work it also helps when I physically turn the painting upside down or to another side. It <laughs> somehow makes no logical sense to me, but it really does help. It gives me a whole new perspective on the painting as a whole. I'm able to see it in different ways and then I'm able to return it to its original orientation and see where to take it next. More than anything else, this tip works really great for me when I'm trying to figure out what's next. Tip number four, go back to play mode. Sometimes I can tell I've made a mistake, but I'm not sure what the mistake is. It just feels off, you know? 
so what i do especially for large work um basically not for work that i do in a sketchbook i take a picture of this stuck painting and i upload it onto procreate into my ipad in case you don't know about it procreate is a digital illustration app where you can sketch and you can draw and there's like just you can do a lot of things to muck about it's pretty cool um to use it even on its own anyway so i use it particularly to untangle when i'm feeling knotted and i'm feeling stuck in the painting i put the painting the photo of the painting into procreate and then i draw over it i edit i paint i add layers i change colors sometimes i even erase because i'm just playing around and i allow myself to do whatever i want to i just mess around if on the canvas when i was trying to figure it out i was on solve mode here i take myself back to play mode i just go wild and i get back into experimenting this really releases me from this stuck place that i've brought myself to and it lets me just use my imagination and play loose and often this is how i figure out how to get unstuck uh with a mistake or if i'm feeling stuck about how to move forward you may not have an ipad and that's totally fine you can just take a picture and take multiple printouts of the painting then sit as if this were a sketchbook and paint over the painting like make your additions change the color um add to it take away from it use different media play with it basically there is something so underrated about play not just in the creative processes but also in life like i found that often when you take yourself less seriously and you just play for a bit you find yourself back you find out who you are and things feel lighter and better and there's a lot of clarity tip number 5 if all else fails paint over the mistake and redo just that part or start the whole thing all over again Now if you absolutely hate what has happened and you absolutely hate the mistake and you just can't work with it I would say paint over it that's what I did with this piece I painted over particularly the second half the lower half of this painting I just colored the whole thing orange and I started out all over again because I did not like what had happened to it and I take in time away from it and i tried to work with a mistake and none of those kind of worked out for me and i for me the last resort always is to isolate that particular part where the mistake has happened and then just paint over it and start over i don't mind doing that but it always is sort of the last resort for me and the very very absolute last resort and i've done this very very rarely in my life is that i have just stopped the painting without any guilt i have just done a wash over the painting maybe like a white or a black and completely just taken the painting away i always take a photo before i do that to see what went wrong maybe it luck to me like a few months later when i'm not completely and totally focused on it but i have now developed this last resort absolute emergency measure which i do without guilt where i just paint the whole thing over into a black or a white and treat it as a completely fresh new canvas at this point i would have either sketched the painting in my book in my sketchbook to see what went wrong and what can i fix and how to not make that mistake again or i'll just you know in the rarest of rare cases just use um the canvas or something else and i'm totally okay with that but i would say if you're doing this don't give up on your painting too early work with tip 1 2 3 4 and only then this is sort of like the drastic measure but when you take the drastic measure don't feel the guilt it's fine canvases are there for you to work on and rework on it's totally okay Okay so if you have stuck with me so far thank you so much for watching as it turns out 
I was not able to film the last part of it. Well, I was I had actually put it to film, but the card ran out. The card on the camera ran out and I did not know because I was so in the flow. And I finished the painting and then I kind of um this morning when I was editing, I was checking the card, the memory card, and it so turns out that that doesn't even exist. They will show you what the final piece looks like here. I'm actually really happy with where it's netted out. Um, let me know what you think in the comments below. I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know what your tips are. If you are an artist, if you watch this video and you're like, hey, this is great, but I also do X, Y, Z, I would love to know what those things are. Please put them in the comments below. I would love to um, hear from you. And as usual, subscribe if you find this useful and share it if you think other people will find it useful and like it because it helps the algorithm. All right, that's it from me for this week. I will talk to you soon. Bye.